The headlines say the US-China chip fight is business as usual. But this week, the rules of global technology shifted. The United States revoked TSMC's fast-track license to ship advanced chip-making tools into China, tightened controls on Samsung and SK Hynix, and blacklisted 32 Chinese-linked firms. Beijing struck back within hours, launching trade probes aimed squarely at American semiconductor companies. Many assumed the chip war was cooling in the early months of 2025, but these moves proved the opposite. They threaten a $760 billion industry and the very hardware that powers artificial intelligence. In the next few minutes, we'll break down the week's surprise escalations, the explosive AI-driven demand behind them, and which players are best and worst positioned for what comes next. The real pressure comes from demand that won't wait. US data center construction has surged to a $40 billion annual run rate, up nearly 50% in a single year, equal to the square footage of more than 40 professional football stadiums, much of it designed specifically for AI. Analysts project the AI accelerator market, those are the GPUs and custom silicon that train and run large language models, to reach roughly $380 billion by 2029, a scale that could soon rival the entire global PC market. Meanwhile, global semiconductor equipment sales, everything from extreme ultraviolet lithography machines to precision etchers made by a handful of firms like ASML, Applied Materials, and LAM Research, are forecast to hit an all-time record of $125 billion in 2025. Every one of those GPUs and the high bandwidth memory, known as HBM, that feeds them, depends on cutting-edge 3 nanometer logic. HBM is a stacked memory architecture that can move data up to 10 times faster than conventional DRAM, and it is critical for AI workloads. That funnel leads straight to a handful of foundries, and that's why supply restrictions bite so hard. Here's where it gets bigger. In a single week, first, TSMC waiver revoked. The US Commerce Department cancelled the special validated end-user waiver that had allowed TSMC's Nanjing Fab to import American chip-making tools without individual export licenses. Now, every shipment of advanced lithography or deposition equipment requires case-by-case -case approval, adding delay and uncertainty to one of the world's most critical fabs. Second, Korean fabs under annual review. Reports surfaced that Samsung and SK Hynix will soon need yearly site licenses for restricted equipment, turning once stable permits into annual negotiations. Third, China's counter moves. Beijing opened an anti dumping investigation into American analog ICs and a discrimination probe targeting US chip firms. Fourth, entity list expansion. Washington added 32 more companies accused of funneling advanced gear to SMIC and other military linked fabs. And just days later, new twists arrived. China's SMIC began trial production with domestically built deep ultraviolet lithography equipment, a small but symbolic step toward reducing reliance on foreign tools. Meanwhile, Chinese regulators launched an antitrust investigation into NVIDIA, even as NVIDIA's new China-only RTX 6000D AI chip met a lukewarm reception from Alibaba, ByteDance and Tencent. These moves show both the determination and the hurdles in China's drive for semiconductor independence. Each action tightens the supply of advanced nodes while inviting retaliation. These policy salvos matter because the most powerful AI chips depend on a process so complex that only a handful of companies on Earth can even attempt it. If you already follow semiconductor manufacturing, much of this will sound familiar. But it's exactly this complexity that makes the latest US-China moves so consequential. Welcome to the 3 nanometer frontier, often called the advanced node. At this scale, transistor gates are smaller than a strand of DNA. A single logic wafer requires dozens of layers, each etched with nanometer precision. Any vibration, an air current, a speck of dust can ruin it. The only tool capable of printing these features is extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV. ASML in the Netherlands is the sole company that makes full EUV systems. Each machine costs around $200 million, weighs 180 tons, and takes an entire jumbo jet just to ship. But EUV is only the start. The process also relies on ultra-pure chemicals and rare gases. Japan supplies most of the photoresists, the world's high-grade neon and argon used to generate EUV light. Nonetheless, these still trace back to plants in Ukraine and Russia. Even the mirrors inside the tool must be polished to an atomic level by a single supplier in Germany. All of this makes advanced nodes breathtakingly expensive. A state-of-the-art fab can cost 15 to 20 billion dollars and take three to five years to build, with yields that must exceed 90% to break even. 
only TSMC, Samsung, and Intel can produce at this level today. And TSMC controls the lion's share. That's why every AI accelerator, every high bandwidth memory stack, ultimately depends on this narrow supply chain. Export controls on even a single EUV component ripple instantly through the entire AI economy. In the chip war, controlling three nanometers isn't just a technical bragging right, it's geopolitical leverage. And that leverage is concentrated in remarkably few hands. Exactly what makes this week's US-China escalation so powerful. The entire advanced node chip market is more concentrated than commercial aircraft manufacturing, global oil refining, or even the big three credit rating agencies. No other trillion dollar industry is controlled by so few firms. TSMC holds roughly 70% of advanced foundry revenue, a lead built on unmatched yields and long-term contracts with Apple, AMD, and Nvidia. But US fab expansion has lifted costs and its Taiwan base remains a geopolitical flashpoint. Samsung foundry follows at about 8%, strong in memory and high bandwidth memory critical for AI. Yet its Chinese fabs now depend on an annual US license, turning stable operations into yearly negotiations. Nvidia remains the de facto AI platform powering most hyperscale training clusters, but faces a Chinese antitrust probe and tepid demand for its China-specific RTX 6000D. AMD is closing the gap, with MI450 accelerators due in 2026 and major cloud wins already booked and this concentration extends far beyond the chip makers. ASML, Applied Materials, LAM Research, Tokyo Electron and KLA supply the lithography, deposition and metrology tools every advanced fab needs, while a tiny network of Japanese chemical makers and rare gas plants in Ukraine and Russia control essential inputs. It's dominance across the entire value chain, from raw materials to finished wafers. China understands this perfectly, SMIC and state-backed vendors are racing to scale 2040 nanometers nodes and localize photoresists, gases, and other key materials, an effort central to Beijing's drive for technological self-reliance and national security. Together, these players form an interlocked ecosystem where a single export restriction or even a delayed EUV shipment can send shockwaves through the entire AI economy, precisely the pressure current policy moves are meant to exploit. And the implications stretch far beyond corporate balance sheets. A world dependent on a few fabs means every AI rollout, autonomous driving, precision medicine, national defense, relies on a fragile supply chain. China's push for self-reliance may create a mature node glut that whiplashes automotive and industrial chip pricing. US analog chip makers, such as Texas Instruments and Analog Devices, already saw share price drops after Beijing's probes, proof that regulatory shockwaves hit markets fast. Consumers everywhere could feel the ripple. Higher costs for smartphones, laptops and electric vehicles as supply shocks feed inflation. Meanwhile, allied nations like India, Japan and Germany are offering billions in subsidies to lure fabs, redrawing the global manufacturing map. Here's the takeaway. A $760 billion industry powering the AI revolution is now the front line of global strategy. The events of this week and the fresh twists since show the chip war isn't slowing. It's accelerating with consequences for everything from smartphones to national defense. Who do you think gains most if China's self-reliance push succeeds? Domestic champions like SMIC or the global equipment giants who still supply them? Share your thoughts in the comments. And for a deeper look at how AI is reshaping entire industries, watch our Tesla AI pivot analysis linked on screen.